Hello everyone, this is Becky Dykes. Um, I'm very honored to be here today, or tonight rather. Uh, so thank you, Jamie, for inviting me. But I'm very excited uh, to show you about creating your own shapes in Silhouette Studio. Uh, I recently started a fairly new group. I guess it's probably about five or six months old. But it's all about um, getting SVG files in exchange for $9.99. It's 30 files. But then we also do a lot of videos uh, like this one I'm going to show you today um, on how to start creating your own SVG files so that you can kind of work yourself away from having to purchase files all the time. So um, I'm just a, a cheap crafter like that, so don't feel like you have to uh, do this, but if you take the time and energy to invest in learning a little bit about your software, then I think you'll be very happy with how it turns out. So uh, I am going to wait just a few minutes and see if we can get some more fans in here. So hi, Julie. It's very nice to see you. Um, known Julie for a long time, so... She's uh, my mom's number one advocate. She regularly emails me to make sure I'm treating her correctly. <laughs> so, alrighty, well, we will go ahead and get started. What I have here in Silhouette Studio is um, just some, some basic shapes that I want to show you that we are able to recreate. So these up here at the top are going to be more basic. Um, but not unimportant. And then this is going to be, say, our finished project um, to be able to use multiple different functions to, to get one shape. So the first panel that we want to talk about is going to be your replicate panel. Okay, so over on the right hand side, looks like a little pinwheel. And it's going to be uh, very important for these first few projects that we do today. And the next thing I'm going to talk about is creating shapes. So we're here on the left hand side under drawing tools and you have a rectangle, a rounded rectangle, and most importantly, we're working today with the ellipse. Also, before I go any farther, when you're using these tools, if you hold down your shift key while you draw, you will get a perfect circle and or a perfect square. So I'm going to go ahead and do that going to hold down the shift key and draw a circle. Okay, once that's done, I'm going to use my, you can use mirror or duplicate because a circle is a circle. And I'm going to give myself another circle. Move that down a little bit. Now what I use to move in this case is on my keyboard. I hold down the shift key and use my directional arrow. So if you haven't tried that shortcut yet, definitely write it down for later. And then I will group these together. Now the magic happens after you group them together, you can use this rotate copies down here at the bottom. And when I do that, it gives me all these different circles, which in and of itself is pretty cool. But what's even better is if I select them all using my drag box, then I can weld them together. And then if I release my compound path, you'll see I now have two of the shapes that we were talking about creating right there. So the, the scalloped edge is always really cool. Um, I don't know how many of you started as paper crafters like we did, but that was one of my most coveted dies when I had my big shot was I always needed the scalloped edge to make um, any type of flower or whatnot. So that's always really cool. Um, the next thing to talk about, we're going to do something similar, but we're going to do it with smaller circles. So I'll go ahead and create a smaller circle. Now you notice I'm also spacing these out a little farther. So I'll go ahead and group them together again. And now when I use rotate copies, I don't get overlapping circles, but I still get circles in a circle, shapes in a circle. So if I group these together again and then rotate copies again, now I have a second group 
okay, to give me a full circle. Now, the reason that that's important is because I now have a monogram frame. Um, I can do this with circles, but I can just as easily do it with hearts or shamrocks or Easter eggs or any anything of that line. The only thing that's important to remember, and let me get another shape that you guys can see. Let me pull from a library. Let's see. Do we have a heart in here? Here we go. I'll use this heart. Okay. Now, the reason that I wanted to show you this is because when you're using a shape, it's very important to remember that you want to use your mirror instead of your duplicate. Okay, I want a mirror image to space it out because that's what will give me my hearts all facing inwards or outwards. If I were to create a duplicate and try to do the same thing, whoops, too far. Then I get a couple hearts facing one way and a couple hearts facing the other way. <clears throat> now, you could set this up to do this intentionally, but for, for most things that you need, doing them, uh, the mirror instead of the duplicate is the way you wanna go. <clears throat> okay. So I saw somebody tagged me. It was my cousin, Jerry. All right. Hi, Jerry. Okay. So I just wanted to check and make sure I didn't have any questions. So if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments and we can uh, go back over certain parts or um, you can catch them on the replay, whatever works for you. But I definitely want to answer any questions that you have. Let's go ahead and talk about using a, <clears throat> excuse me, using a different shape. We're using this um, create a polygon. And when I do that, which is a pretty neat tool, it gives me a hexagon, right? But here I can control how many or how few shapes or how few sides that I have. I can also control uh, large or small, and if I wanted to rotate it. So in this case, I just want a basic triangle. And I'm going to right click and choose convert to path. And that locks that shape into, um, into the triangle. And then I want to, let's see, we are going to rotate it this way. Okay, this is another case where I want to do a mirror and not a duplicate. Now I'll group those together and rotate. And if I weld these together, and then don't forget, you then release the compound path. And I have a little starburst shape. And of course, depending on the angle of the triangle that you're playing with, that's what's going to determine um, how severe your starburst shape is. You can go bigger or smaller. And then for this type of starburst shape, you're, oops, you're going to draw an ellipse again, but you're going to draw it as an oval. And now when I do an oval, and these are all the same basic concepts that we did with the circles, right? And see how they, you just have to make sure that they overlap. See how these overlap just the tiniest bit. That's exactly what we wanted. Oops. And we're going to weld and release the compound path. And now I have more of a flower shaped scallop. And then I also have a more starburst shaped circle than what I had over here. 
So it all depends on what you're looking at. And the point, the reason that those are important is really when you start designing your own SVG files, whether they're for personal use or for selling, um, it's really important that you somehow train yourself to be able to look at images and recognize that the majority of them are made up of basic shapes. Okay, so we're going to use this one as an example. <clears throat> now, this is not my image, so I, you know, I use it as an example, but I just want to go ahead and cover that. Even when you're creating your own images, you want to make sure that you are doing so within the copyright boundaries. We still don't want to, you know, take three circles and turn it into mouse ears and now I can call it my design. That's not true. Um, if I can look at a shape and I know what it's supposed to be, whether I drew it or created it in Silhouette Studio, then I'm probably violating the copyright uh, terms and conditions for other people who own the rights. So I'm going to use this as an example, but I just wanted to throw that out there. Don't get too excited about, um, you know, being able to take images and, and piece them together. So first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to draw... A rectangle okay and it's just the basic shape I drew it uh, to be the basic outline of what I'm working with here and you notice that I have these curves the the way that it curves in those are going to be the ellipse tool right which is the same thing that we worked with earlier and I can manipulate this to get the the style of curve that I need. And then I want to do the same thing on the other side. <clears throat> okay. So the reason that that's important is I can now group these together. And if I select them in my rectangle, we're now we're moving from the replicate over to the modify panel. Okay, I can hit subtract, and now that's the shape that I'm left with. Okay, and if I line my crown back up, you can see that for the most part, that's the basic outline of the sides and the bottom. Now let's go ahead and talk about these angles right here. All I need to do is draw a square, or a rectangle rather, and if I rotate it, I can match it up at that angle. Okay, now to get another one on the other side, I'm going back to the replicate and I'm gonna use my mirror. And just that way I don't have to free rotate another rectangle. Okay, so if I move <clears throat> this out of the way, then I can group those together and back to the modify panel, hit subtract. Now that's what I'm left with. Okay, so starting to look a little better. Let's talk about this square that's right here. Now the easy thing to do, I'm gonna go ahead and cheat. I can use my knife tool. Don't forget you have two options up here. I'm gonna select solid and I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that top piece off because we don't actually need it. But what we do need in place of that is a diamond shaped. So you guessed it, we come right back over here. We're going to draw a square. And I can rotate it 45 degrees. And now I have a diamond. Okay, so what should I do now? I'm going to go ahead and weld. All right, getting a little closer, a little closer. All right, so now what we need is circles. So if I draw my circle, again, I'm gonna hold down the shift key. It's a little bigger than I needed. Well, maybe not. I'm going to go a tad bigger because I want to make sure that I'm covering up this portion right here. Okay. 
So now I'm going to group these circles together, <clears throat> come back to my modify panel and subtract. And there we go. So if you take a look at my starting image and my finishing image, they're pretty darn close. Now, again, like I said, I, I use this as an example just to show you. And it's okay to, to do this to practice, but just remember that um, you do, when you start creating these for your use and to sell, you want to make sure that you're kind of creating, you know, from your own images. But for the most part, I mean, we've created some pretty basic essentials and learned a few things about uh, creating your own shapes. Another thing is using basic shapes for not just creating, but for accent pieces. You know, so for example, if I, um, you know, if I'm creating text and I need to underline it, well, all I have to do is draw it a skinny rectangle <clears throat> and that's you know I won't say that's the best example but a lot if you look at a lot of designs they're accented with small polka dots or little hearts or you know different things like that so if I wanted a heart you know I can do a basic heart if I didn't want to draw one by hand right because we're talking about two circles and another triangle. And if I line those up, you know, then then that's what I'm looking at. Now, Sometimes, you know, you will come across a shape that you're not just going to be able to do on your own, and that's okay. But if you just keep in mind that the less that you have to pay for for the basics is also the more that you have to, uh, you know, spend on other supplies or uh, some more goodies or craft chameleon or something like that, you know, make sure that, that you're spending your crafting money wisely. That's where I'm going with that. So... There we go. So I can now weld these together. Release my compound path. And I have a basic heart. Like I said, it's not, not super duper special. I make flat. There we go. Okay. So <clears throat> with that being said, let me jump back over. I want to see what questions we had. I kind of threw out a lot of information out there. Let's see. <clears throat> All right. Well, I'm not seeing any questions, which is either good or bad. It means that I either went over it really well or I kind of left you guys in the dust. So um, feel free to watch the replay. And if you think of anything, let me know. Or, you know, if you have any other requests, uh, feel free to put in the comments and maybe we'll do this again. So, um, yeah, I guess that's going to be it for tonight. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining me and, uh, hopefully we'll see you around. Have a good night. Bye-bye.